relevant in today's video we are going to do inventory system remember we did part one where we were trying to attempt the previous question paper so i decided that i should look for other paper so that you can check uh, the different on how they can set this kind of question all right so in today's video we are going to prepare a purchase account a sales account and trading account according to the question paper uh, that we have that has been written on the previous year okay so let's check on our question paper that we have for today so it's inventory system use the information provided to complete the following account in the general ledger for the year end date february 2019 and show the entry as it will be posted from the relevant subsidiary books okay and we have 1.1 they said we have to prepare a purchase account 14 marks 1.1.2 sales account 1.1.3 trading account okay so they're going to give you an answer book like this where you have to fill all the kind of details all right so the important part guys that you have to know first is to know the format please make sure that you know the format so that it can be very simple for you to post all the details that they are going to provide okay remember guys in your level just to write a bank to indicate that the purchase has been made in cash is a mark so please make sure that you know the format all right so let's start with um, the information that they give us then we're going to answer 1.2 so they give us the information uh, for 2018 and 2019 okay but we are preparing for 2019 for 2018 is going to assist us to uh, post the balance at the beginning of the year because it's the balance for closing for last year okay the first one they give us a trading stop it's opening and closing so a trading stop we're going to post it when we go to a trading account okay then we have carriage on purchase so this is a transport that we've paid uh, for purchases that we've made which is going to trade in account as well okay then we have a cash purchase for the year which is uh, 215,500 so this one is for under purchase account because it's a cash we know that we have to use a word bank okay 215 and 500 what they say cash you use the word bank so that you can in a max if they say credit you use the word creditors control okay so a credit purchase for the year is 163 600 so 600 so in this case obviously guys we have to use the word a creditors control all right then the other thing guys that i forgot to explain to you is that under purchase account when we purchase is increased on the debit side when the inventory goes out we decrease on the credit side it can go through donation withdrawal by the owner and so on and so on. even a return if you return to suppliers is going to reduce the purchase that we have made okay then let's proceed a cash sales and credit sales is not going to form a purchase okay so a cost price stock taken by the owner for personal use 18,500 yes it reduce what the purchase the drawings amount to okay 18,500 18,000 500 okay then we have goods returned to creditors creditors is our supplier which means that they return goods of 10,300 10,300 okay we can see a good return simple as that okay and another one we have a donation of stock to local children who eight thousand okay which means that a donation is going to reduce our purchase 
of 3,000. All right. Then we also have goods returned by a data. This is not part of purchase. A data is the person who come to purchase to us, which means that is going to reduce a sales now, not purchase. Okay. Purchase is only reduced if we are the one who return to supplier, not if the, the data return to us. All right. So I think uh, we read all the transition which means that from there we have to account for the balance okay and we post it to trading account which means that we have to check which side is higher okay as you can see the higher side of course is debit side which we have to calculate total of 379.100 okay which means that the balance of the debit must be the same as on the credit 379 100 and we balance with trading account okay how do we balance it's very simple you take the total and you subtract everything on top and you get 342 342 300 so this is the amount that we are going to transfer to trading account and we will start with the name purchase because it's on the credit, this side must come to debit. Okay. The trading. Okay. Sorry. We must start with balance here. Then we come to trading account. Okay. We'll swap with the word purchase. Okay of 342 300 all right so because we already started with trading account don't forget to post opening balance and closing balance on the credit side opening on the debit side okay opening balance is how much let's check opening balance is the one of the previous year 148,900, 248,900, and closing, closing balance is gonna be 236,800. Closing balance is for the current year, okay? And then now, let's proceed. The second account is sales which we are going to do it the same with this one okay depending on the transaction so remember we skip a current and purchase because it's from part of trading account okay carriage on purchase uh, which is 22400 okay and then another one we have cash sales and credit sales cash sales and credit sales form a part of sales account and sales increase on the debit side and decrease on the debit side increase on the credit side decrease on the debit side okay then we have cash which we have to use bank and credit we use debtors debtors control Okay, then for cash is amount of 296,000. So these words you must write them correctly because there's a mark allocation here. Okay, and then a credit is amount of 361,400. Okay. Then now we also have a goods returned by a data on the last transaction, which means that is data's allowance. If a data, a, a person who passes on credit return a good, we call it data's allowance of 7,600. In other words, it's reducing a what 
our sales because we, know, we are going to refund that person okay then let's proceed which means that a sales amount of a sales account we can now calculate the balancing figure so that we can transfer it into trading account okay then we're gonna get amount of 657 400 in total if you add these two then this amount must be the same as this side 657 400 this one minus this one is gonna give us 649 800 and we balance it with trading account okay which means that now because we balance this side when we go to trading account it, it must come to a credit okay a ledger account when we balance they must swap a side and swap what a name you can see the name is the same the name is the same okay then it's gonna be 649 800 okay then after that we also have to balance this account okay because i think we adjusted all the transition that we have opening is there purchase is there carriage and purchase is there okay then which side is higher obviously unless the company made a loss the balancing figure must be on the debit side okay we have to calculate totally here so that we can balance so before we proceed guys thank you so much if you have, you have been watching until here if you have been subscribed to this channel please make sure that you subscribe this is how you encourage us to do more videos the more you are liking the more you are subscribing it's encourage us to record video each and every day so that you can learn more tricks in accounting okay thank you so much guys so let's finish up the last part so this other side is going to give us 8 86 600 okay 8 86 600 okay and then we have a profit and loss of 273 3, alright so this is how you should prepare remember there was a 14 marks there was 10 marks there was 14 marks the marks allocation this is how they allocated according to a memorandum they give a mark here a mark here a mark here each name has a mark so that's why you can see that there, there was a lot of marks and you, as you can see guys this topic is very simple and straightforward you have to make sure that you master everything okay the last question which i'm going to show you the answers on the screen uh, it was a theory part okay let's read the question first zandi lezulu is concerned about increase in shoplifting within her business she has heard that business that implement the perpetual inventory system find it easy to detect a theft explain why this is so as well as how theft can be detected using a perpetual stock system remember guys the difference between perpetual and periodic inventory system is that for periodic inventory system um, we don't have computers to record everything we don't have a scanner uh, that can scan a goods and service that we are selling which means that we use our hand and we can't count each and every day we only count at the end of the year so if you are using a periodic there is a risk that if something is getting lost we won't be able to see it until the end of the year imagine if you lost something during january and you are going to count those inventory at the end of the year how are you going to to know that uh, there's a certain person who stole around january probably you find that the company was shifting employees 
so we, we will never know who stole and when but if we are using a perpetual computer is going to scan everything as you can see most of the shop uh, that we are purchasing our grocery they, they they use a scan they don't just check the goods that okay this is a plate is 10 rand and they just say give me 10 rand no they use a scanner uh, so that they can sell to you which means that uh, in other words the system is recording each and every item that has been sold each and every single minute okay so this is the possible answers that we have okay uh, they said in the perpetual inventory system there is not a continuous record of the stock that is on hand at any one time and that's what i was saying that uh, under periodic there's no continuous we don't there, there's no system that is going to 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 count a stock each and every single time okay therefore nearly impossible to check actual stock level after stock take with the accounting record to determine if that has taken place but the perpetual inventory system keep an accuracy record of stock on hand at all time each and every time is going to account the system will account the stock record can therefore be compared to actual stock take to determine the amount of theft that has okay so if we are using a perpetual it's simple because the system is going to do everything okay so i hope you enjoy this video guys so if you haven't watched part one go back and watch part one other chapters are available as well budget i already recorded and all those other chapters that you will need for grade 11 okay i hope you enjoy and i will see you on the next one